Hey boys and girls, here we are again at the um, Consumer Electronics Show. And we're here with uh, TE, and, but before we get to our star, let me, uh, let me introduce uh, uh, Tom Pruchet. He is our Director of Electronics um, at Monroe Associates. And today we're gonna gang up on, um, on Jeremy Patterson, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about TE and how they are the connected part of, uh, of our new electronics world, so. Good, it's thank all you. Yours. Yeah. Appreciate it. Great, yeah. great honor to meet you. My Thanks. team and I watch a lot of your videos, so get a lot of great insights. Uh, yeah, TE Connectivity, it's one of those big companies that you probably haven't heard of, but it's very critical. Uh, you see a lot of our components uh, in, in many of the products that you use every day. Um, so we're essential in, this, the vehicle, in the systems that you're using, whether it's appliances, whether it's uh, personal devices that you're using, or uh, medical, industrial, and especially in automotive, which I'm part of. Uh, we cover a wide range of technologies in the automotive. Most all the systems that you see in a vehicle have part of our connectivity in it. We like to think about it like following the electron uh, mm -hmm. or follow the data. You're going to see TE on one end or the other. Uh, so we make, we're the world's largest innovator in electrical connectivity, whether that's 12 volt, 48 volt, or EV system. So you see connections to motors, inverters, charging inlet uh, for the high power side inside the battery pack. Uh, cell to cell connectivity, uh, also contactor systems or connections in the battery pack, uh, and also AVADAS. Yeah. When you see uh, uh, autonomous vehicle technology, we have a lot of data connectivity and uh, connection products for that too. Yeah, so you're actually um, also in uh, Edge Connecting, which is the, the next big thing as far as we're concerned. I mean, the 48 right. volt is pretty big, but anything that has to do with crash avoidance, you're also into that as well, right? Absolutely. And uh, this is probably the most exciting time to be in automotive. Yeah. It's very rare in your career you get to work on these megatrends. And right now we have three megatrends going on. You have the vehicle electrification that's happening, which is helping enable autonomous driving. And then autonomous driving is driving this, all this towards zonal architectures and software-defined vehicles and compute power that's necessary. So you see all these kind of converging together. It's truly exciting time to be an engineer in this this space, uh, especially for a company like TE that's really innovating. Yeah, uh, new certainly technology. this show seems to be great for showing that experience from the user perspective. But you know, trying to dig into the insides to see where all your parts are that's a little bit of a challenge on this uh, show floor. So uh, yeah. we, we certainly appreciate the TE inside when it's so cleverly concealed. That's right, most all of it's like the TE inside stuff. It's, it's stuff you hopefully just don't ever see. It always works, it's inside the, the vehicle, uh, but it enables the vehicles to be assembled proper, correctly. Yeah. And that's and the, the key the word. Modularity. Yeah, the key word is enabling, because without the uh, conductivity, it's pretty much uh, just a bunch of uh, voltage and, um, and cute, cute little boxes. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, wander out here and see what's going on at the at the electronic show. Uh, we're going to probably see quite a bit more than we did last year. So let's troop off. Really excited to walk through the show because we're seeing all these new technology innovations, but TE is embedded in, in many of these systems throughout here. They're critical to the function of yeah. vehicle systems or any of the type of, of devices that are used out there. Sometimes connectors get a little bit underappreciated. Um, sometimes they may be the afterthought uh, when you're ve designing your vehicle systems or modules or systems like, okay, I need to, need to create a connector, but they're critical to being able to assemble something together, make it modular and make it very robust that you can service the vehicle or any system. Uh, you wanna mate it, forget it. And that's a lot of times people don't know these products because they always work and that's the intention. You don't wanna have to mess around with your connection system. Well, I do remember um, in the past, connections have caused uh, companies a great deal of grief. Um, yeah. And that's why it's better 
to go to something that's, you know, got known reliability, like TEs, connectors. I'm pretty sure that um, I know because I was working for a variety of different car companies when, uh, you know, the, the cheap products started showing up and purchasing agents, they get paid for cheap. And uh, so consequently what wound up happening was there was a, um, a few um, uh, big issues, fires, um, faults, all kinds of things that happened. And, uh, and quite frankly, uh, in a lot of cases, it's better to go with somebody who knows what the hell they're doing. And that's kind of like why you're here. That's yeah. right. Because there's and, uh... and reliability is like key. It is key. And that's, it's amazing the amount of technology that goes into electrical connectivity, sensor products, tremendous amount of engineering that goes into design, especially the heart of the, of the terminal system, the plating technology, the contact physics. So it's always a balance of forces. You want to be able to make sure that when that connection is made, you have the minimal losses as possible, whether the electrical yeah. losses or their data losses. And that comes through contact physics, understanding the design, the terminal systems, design, the plating, and yeah. the manufacturing technologies. I've always found it very fascinating place to be because you're always going to limits of materials. With metals, yeah. plastics, you're going to the limits yeah. uh, to be able to, to create a very robust product that has that balance. You can mate it, you can, and it, it stays uh, functioning for the life of the vehicle, the life of the system. We, um, we have a, a process that uh, designed for automated assembly. And one of the things that's really kind of important, you use the word mating, but it's actually the joining of, uh, of the connector to whatever it's connecting to. Yeah. That is truly critically important because if it's not done right first time, then you wind up with the situations that I was talking about with some of these bigger car companies that went to cheaper products that you know, oh, they showed you here, it connected, but then after 100,000, 200, a million, whatever, it's not hard to get them, uh, those different connections and whatnot, to start uh, failing. So when you say connected, I like to say that these things are right first time, and that's what's really important. I don't want to go back in and try and dink around with a harness uh, because some <coughs> assembly operator didn't push it hard enough or it wasn't quite made correctly and it popped right back out. That kind of Never. brings me to my point, part of my past is that um, a lot of people don't appreciate that a connector is designed for a purpose that includes how many times it's mated and removed. Yeah. So many automotive connectors are made for maybe one, two or three insertion removal cycles. And uh, it's a delicate engineering balance, I'm sure. It includes material science and a lot of things. What can you say about that? I mean, there's a, uh, a delicate balance there. You don't want to make a connector that can survive too many cycles because now you're paying more for it than you should. And that's a big part of why you're successful is that you've got that right balance. So right. what do you think uh, about mating and removal cycles? Yeah, and it is finding that balance, like you said, and it comes down to the contact physics, the geometry, every, every form, every bend matters. When you're talking about uh, terminal technology and design, and the plating. Plating technologies are, are, have to be very innovative because in most cases with low voltage harness, you, you gotta survive 10 or so mating cycles um, because you, you, again, you want that balance. For our high voltage products, maybe around 50 cycles. When you look at charging, as another example, we have to survive 10,000 cycles. And that comes again, more plating technology is designed of the contacts and the balance of forces. Because it's certainly, if we didn't have those requirements, it'd be pretty easy. If you need to mate one time and that's it, you can hammer it together and you have very high normal force and low resistance, but that's not the reality we live in. And then every technician would hate you. Yeah. What's that? Every technician would hate you. Yeah, yeah no. Having yeah. one, one yeah. mating cycle. Yeah. So we've been talking about connectors and sometimes people really don't know what we're talking about. But let's look at one of these right here. These are little, these are called header connectors and, um, and or sometimes right angle header connectors. And then over here we've got, these are major connectors. These are connectors that have high voltage and you can tell because they're orange up here. So, and that's kind of like what, uh, what we're talking about. All these different connections and whatnot, all of them have a significant amount of, uh, of quality attachments that have to go along with them. Snapping something in like that and making sure that it's locked in place. All these things are really kind of important. So that's really why we're um, all about TE and showing off what it is that they can do. 
So we're here at the LG booth, and uh, they're looking at advanced uh, advanced electronics, uh, wireless connections, and stuff like that. But even wireless means you're going to have to have connectors. So what do you see in here for us? Yeah, even within these products here, Tehe has a lot for uh, miniaturization products that may go like uh, inside those modules that are connecting key components together uh, inside the board devices. Or you still have, like you said, connectivity that goes to those modules out to something else. Uh, but we do a lot within the BMS, uh, onboard chargers or DC to DC converters, uh, connections to those from the outside. Even batteries are very important space for us as well. Uh, when you look at lithium ion cells, how they're connected together, we do a lot of the cell to cell connectivity. Yeah. And uh, especially module to module. We have what we call Beacon Plus product line. It's like truly like a Lego block of, of connectivity. Right. There's been just countless ways you put these together uh, to be able to connect power modules together uh, with very low resistance. Because you talk about battery and those type of power levels, every micro ohm matters. You want to yeah. make sure there's no losses in the system. So Beacon is a critical product and uh, connectivity is the essence of really what the battery pack is, connecting those lithium ion cells together efficiently. Excellent. So the wireless aspect of it, you know, what drives the industry towards that sort of a solution? Obviously we're eliminating some wires, but what is, what is the criticality of those particular wires that drives it? What is critical as far as you have to have voltage sensing and temperature sensing to all the, the cells. So you want to get as much as you can of data back for the, your, your state of health, state of charge. So it's critical you get that information back reliably. So yeah, you want to kind of eliminate some of the cabling and some of the connection points, but make it more flexible where you're doing those measurements from as well, because you can't measure every cell right now. That's, that's the ultimate dream where you have individual cell management, and we'll have that someday, but right now you want to be able to have that flexibility. And I think wireless does provide the, some of that. Yeah, having torn down a lot of batteries, there's a lot of spaghetti wire in a lot of the applications and you just look at it and you can see these wires, if they were to get pinched or shorted out, this might result in some bad things happening. So uh, I have an appreciation for the wireless side of it because of that, but um, yes, reducing complexity in the pack is um, definitely a- That's why it's great for us. I mean, it's a high reliability area and you have to really know what you're doing. So you have to have the right connectivity products and solution as you're looking at low voltage connections to voltage sensing and to temperature and couple that with high power you've got to be able to make sure that you have very robust connections that work for the life you don't want to go in and repair a battery pack so it's got to be a very robust system so do you get into the the electronics too as well the the wireless part of it or no we're mainly on the passive side of things so more of uh, connections inside Just those connection. modules yeah Okay, so we're standing in front of uh, actually uh, my favorite uh, of the Teslas until I get my Cybertruck, and that is the, uh, the Model Y. And the Model Y, of course, uses the uh, uh, North American uh, uh, charging system. And um, unfortunately, I can't open it up, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about what's going on inside. Yes, uh, for me, I think this has been a great shift in the market to see uh, yeah. NACS start take off because uh, the U.S. hasn't really had a standard. We've well, had, had CCS1 the and then they had uh, NACS, but we haven't had a single charging standard. Yeah, like right. Europe has CCS2, China has GB charging standards. Yeah. So it's really good for the market to have now a, a, a standard that we're moving towards, a single standard for the consumer. And uh, they're different. There are different interfaces, and, and we're proud to, to have both in our portfolio, all of the charging standards in our portfolio. Uh, so it's nice to see it. It's it's different where you have AC and DC all together in one interface versus CCS1 is separate with the AC and DC portion. Um, so a little different, but uh, still have to provide the same function. Excellent. And have to be very high reliable and, and transfer high power yeah. very efficiently. And it has to be, it has to be small and light enough that uh, everybody can use it. The monster in the next booth there, uh, I can tell you for sure, my little skinny uh, wife it doesn't care for um, those, uh, those great big giant cables. When yeah. you start fooling around with effectivity and, and efficiency and happy customers, uh, it's much, much easier to, to go to uh, um, NASC. So. Yeah, you can't beat the, the packaging space of NACS. Yeah. That's very efficient packaging. 
Um, so it, it's it's good. It's good to see, and we can get some high power out of that system too, just like yeah. the CCS one. Yeah. So are, are you doing anything to ease the pain of the transition for the OEMs who went down the one path and now suddenly have to go down a new one? I mean, it seems like with a smaller form factor, it offers some opportunity for s more simple retrofit. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, is this part of your plan or? Absolutely. Absolutely. And we and TE has moved very quickly. We already have tooled up parts uh, that are available and we're working with the customers because they do need a transition and it, it's tough. I mean, the architecture is different between this style electric vehicle than what's traditionally out there because with this style, the, the electronics are in the battery pack and things are going in together and they're doing the split. And most other OEMs, you have a traditional onboard charger and then DC is going in the battery. AC is going onboard charger and doing the split going in the battery. So we have to be able to fit, how do we retrofit? How do we get a, a, a CCS1 into an NACS vehicle? And that's where we have our generations of innovations that we're doing. How can we split it out efficiently? Because you see the standard on the outside seems simple. It's all the technology is in the back. It's inside, it's behind it. The, the temperature sensing, the power transition. Uh, but we have technology now how to split the, the, from AC to DC, whether it's our customer needed at the inlet or down in the line and how they can still keep their architecture the same, but bring in on NACS. Now next generation, they'll then have an architecture that's very similar. That split will happen in the battery pack and we've got technology there too. Perfect, perfect. Okay, everybody, uh, well, we've, uh, we've Walk the show here with Jeremy and um, and Tom, and uh, now my back hurts, and he's <laughs> claiming a bad feet and whatnot. This has been pretty interesting, I think. Um, I, I I really I really like the uh, the fact that we got a check a chance to talk about the the interconnectivity between what TE is doing and really and truly what what the industry right now needs. So this has been pretty good for me. I'm I'm pretty happy about. The way things have gone, and uh, uh, hopefully, is there anything else you'd like to uh, comment about that you don't think we've uh, we've hit so far? Yeah, I think we've hit most of the high points. Uh, it's a huge show. Uh, yeah. yeah, we've got plenty of steps in already today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so glad we we're able to to touch on many aspects, which TE again you may have not have heard of before, but hopefully you learn a little bit more about how yeah. how yeah. we operate, our the critical nature of our products. Yeah and how we partner with our customers and working on innovative solutions. I know, I know for myself, just walking with Jeremy and hearing more about TE, I've been a user of their products for many years, but I didn't really understand all the things that happen behind the scenes. You know, for example, they're not just a connector or a harness company, they're, they're a partner. They can help you develop subsystem components of every type. And uh, that's really what people need. They don't need just another connector supplier. They need somebody that helps navigate through this extremely complicated new world we have of software defined vehicles and uh, high levels of connectivity and network communications. And yeah. yeah, it's the integration factor as far as I'm concerned. Um, without, without your connectors, nothing works. Like I said before, it's just uh, some electrons and um, and a kind, of, kind of a bunch of fancy black boxes. So it's it's good that we got the chance to uh, to find out a little bit about the uh, if you like to call it the um, unsung hero of uh, of electrification. So anyhow, um, thanks so much. Let me change arms here. Thanks so much, Jeremy. Yep, thank you. Very very sure. nice of you to spend some time with us and make thanks, all this thank stuff you. happen. Great meeting thank you. you. Likewise. So uh, make sure that you uh, keep watching and are alive. Thanks again to um, uh, TE and um, and to the folks here at the uh, at the show for basically <laughs> keeping folks from walking walking through in front of us. There we go. Have a good day. Bye now. <laughs>